All right, so we're gonna work on. <laughs> that joke is just as bad as it was at the beginning of the pandemic. Let's get digital. <laughs> Come on, that was so good. I'm sorry, I just had to unmute myself. That was so funny. <laughs> First thing I did when looking at this uh, presentation was I looked at your questions. Um, love to make a little word cloud, a little visual representation. The biggest things that came out of this were sound, quality, singing, music, video, buffering. And I know that it was poor sound quality was the line of words, but I always just think about see this and I thought, poor students, poor students. The main questions were sound quality synchronization for rehearsals and performances, and then engaging classes and communities. So the short answers for these are, can I synchronize performance over Zoom? No, um, that is the short answer. The long answer is that there is equipment out there, but it is not accessible to the individual level yet. Um, it's more institutional purposes. Um, there's, a pro there's a system called JackTrip but it requires you to have separate hardware that you plug directly into your um, router. And it requires you to like open the command interface and do like server connections. It's things that like scare me. <laughs> um, it requires co like level of coding knowledge essentially. So how do you make sound better? Settings in Zoom are the first thing. And then equipment. Now the equipment doesn't have to be expensive. It can be, um, maybe you can, make a huge difference with a um, microphone that is under a hundred dollars that can make a world of difference you don't even have to spend a hundred bucks to make your audio better so and how do you make videos you either practice for doing them live or invest in hardware and software i am an advocate for doing your videos live and i'll talk more about that later in i think that live is probably the better option for most teachers and teaching artists um, because Performing for a recording or performing for a for an edited recording is a whole different ball game than what we do all what we usually do, which is live performance. So the mindset is that it's not business as usual, so we can't work with our usual workflow. Some things don't work over video chat, which is what I was talking about with the performing music live, recording live. It's tough. Um, but rehearsal, some, this part was targeted for teachers when I gave it before. Rehearsing ensemble music is only part of what we do, but those standards can be met in other ways as well. And the big issue that we are up against here is latency. Uh, show me something on screen, a hand up on the screen or a thumbs up if you know what latency means. Looks like at this point in the pandemic, we've all come across that word, so good. Uh, just to clarify, if anyone doesn't know, that's the time it takes for the sound to go from your computer over the Wi-Fi to Zoom servers, then back over the Wi-Fi to the other person's computer. It takes a good long while. So that means that there's gonna be delay. We can't deliver the same experiences, but we can still deliver quality experiences. And we usually work from a concept and tools to an activity for our students or for the participants in our um, programs, right? We look at what we want to teach, the tools we have, and how to teach it. This is how it tended to be for a lot of people moving for or back in March. A lot of teachers especially were looking at, here's an activity I've grown really fond of doing. And then they would like use the tools they had and lose the concept in the middle. When we can't use the same tools, it makes a big break in our instructions. So we have to go back and learn new tools and we have to weigh those tools, the learning curve, against the educational value. You think about these um, programs and stuff. For DPS teachers, think about Canvas. How long does it take us to learn to use that? And then magnify that by like 100 times for students. Um, I believe, is it Mr. Middlesworth? And I'm going to get this wrong. I'm so sorry. Aunt Jess or Auntess? Um, <laughs> you said you're working with um, senior citizens. So the time it takes for y'all to learn a program is going to be totally different than it takes for them. Um, it'll take much longer. So hardware and software, the two big things that make digital teaching possible. 
hardware for making lessons. Um, if you're using a laptop right now, or yeah, show me something on screen if you're using a laptop. All right, and uh, Miss Cash, are you on the DPS laptop? <laughs> all right, um, I know that one all too well. <laughs> um, unless you are on like the newest, newest MacBook Pro or a PC gaming laptop, the hardware in it is not up to video editing. And even in those computers, the webcam is just not good. Um, <laughs> it's a wonder, people talk about it in tech forums all the time, how you can fit a 4K camera inside of this, which is much smaller, but you can't fit that same camera into the laptop for some reason. Um, we get these fuzzy 1080p messes in laptops. So a basic external webcam is a huge improvement for both video and audio. For example, um, most of the webcams have a built-in microphone as well. And I don't know if any of you have encountered this before, listening to someone present, and suddenly you hear this word, this start to come up with them. That's because they're using their laptop's microphone, and inside that laptop, that fan has just kicked up to try and keep it cool. But that fan is touching the same plastic as the microphone, so it's picking up all of that buzzing. Um, an external webcam won't do that. So I have a video in here um, where someone goes through the three that I would call the consumer market. These are, um, they were under 100. I believe the 920 has gone up a little bit in cost. These are the three that, like, any of these will be an improvement over your computer or yeah, your basic one. I have the 920 right now. Um, if you are doing your content live through Zoom, not for live recording, but if you're doing it live through Zoom, you don't need to go any further than the 920 because Zoom is going to compress your video anyway. If you had a 4K camera just for using Zoom, it, you wouldn't be sending out all 4,000 um, 4K pixels it would compress it down probably to 720 even. Um, but if you're doing recording for like lessons, then you'll get the benefits of a 4K camera. Um, another big improvement is a USB condenser microphone. It helps you so much. Um, I'm using an MXL 990 that I've had since I was in high school. I've had this one for now Oh, over a decade. Well, well over a decade. I have dropped it. It's been bumped around, knocked around, left in a hot car. It's a workhorse. It costs, I believe, $95. And it is much better sound. For example, if I go to the, um, let's get my microphone source. Sorry. When you do recording, you wind up with like 15 microphones to choose from in Zoom. Um, if I pick the 920, this is what the 920 sounds like. Is that an improvement or a bad for the, <laughs> yeah. This is the webcam microphone. Then if I go back to my condenser. The condenser just picks up all of the bass tones much better. Um, it has more clarity. And yeah, it picks up the low and the high better. If you use the webcam, you're losing all of the low end sounds and the high end sounds. And that really does start to tax people's ears. That's the hardest thing about being on, one of the things it's, it's Zoom fatigue. So filming with an iPhone X or iPad Pro is a webcam better for filming. If you have an iPhone, honestly, iPhone or iPad, I don't know the iPad camera that well, but mobile devices have fantastic cameras nowadays. Um, Adam Savage is tested. I don't know if you guys know Mythbusters. Um, Phantom Power, I'll come to the, that condenser mic in one second. I need to get to that one. Um, yeah, tested when the pandemic hit, the tested crew stopped filming in person and all the people like Adam Savage, Mythbusters, people doing their building videos, their, it was all from phones. They just used the phones recorded and sent it off to their editor. And that was how they got their workflow socially distant. I do all my videos that, um, yeah, I'll go around and do concert recordings with my phone. So it's... Really, if you're just making your videos, I cover that in a minute, but if you're just making videos um, for to be sent out asynchronously, this is the way to go. 
And some people will use their phone for their video camera. They'll log in twice, use their phone for video and computer for audio. I wouldn't say that's super necessary because like I said, Zoom is gonna compress your video anyway. Um, the phantom microphone does, or for the phantom microphone, Lord. <laughs> the condenser microphone for your computer will not need phantom power. It is powered by via the, the USB cable. Uh, it's gonna be hard for me to show this one because I have everything so like wired down, but I have mine right here. I actually just put a little gooseneck on my desk I keep my microphone attached physically to my desk. Um, it does mean people can hear when I'm typing sometimes, but it means that whenever I'm teaching or talking, it's right here. I don't have it hanging in the frame, like from above. I don't have it, um, I can't knock it over because it's off to the side and it curves over so my hands can reach under for my keyboard and mouse. So it does not need phantom power for a USB condenser mic. And then like I said here, your phone is a better all-in-one if you just want to record straight away, it's great. Get a tripod for it. Just save yourself some trouble. Um, and car cardinal sin, don't put this on top of your piano and then play on your piano. <laughs> You'd be amazed. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to get into... Um, now raise your hand if you do more live, like live teaching, live performing over Zoom. All right, and raise your hand if you do more um, re pre-recorded materials. Okay, so it looks like we're about a 50-50 split here. Um, this next section is going to be a little bit of both, but more for the live people. One of the biggest things you can use if you're looking to upgrade your setup like, like extremely would be a USB mixer. Whereas the condenser microphone it's like directly plug it into your computer, boom, it works. The mixer is just like any mixer you'd run a show, like you'd run an audio show or, sorry, I'm, ooh, words, like you'd run a theater performance or a concert. It just has a USB port on the back that runs into your computer. Um, and it takes all of your audio signals, every speaker, every microphone you have plugged in and sends those all to your computer as one sound. That's a USB mixer. It can take any and all kinds of microphones. It can take as many microphones as you have, as you have channels. The alternative that people ask me about is an audio interface. Um, an audio interface turns every mic into its own signal and sends the first two to Zoom. So most people only have like the Focusrite, Scarlett, like solo or duo with one or two slots. That would work. But if you have one of the really big ones that has like eight channels, you can't use all of those channels. Because what interfaces do is they send every microphone as a separate signal to the computer and Zoom can't take eight signals at once. So with this one, you could use two microphones. You could use, for example, a condenser and a headset, or you could use um, like two condensers to mic a whole room or mic a band. But with a USB mixer, you can use like separate microphones for everyone, and they'll all get to the they'll all get through to the Zoom audience. Um, an interface will be useful if you're doing lots of live recording and you want to go back and mix it later, because then say you're using like five microphones, and you want to do um, like you've got one for the singer, one on the guitar amp, one on the bass. Um, direct line from the keyboard and one microphone like over the top of the drums to mic the whole drum kit. If you recorded those into your computer, you would be able to go back and edit all five of those tracks separately. If you did that same setup with a mixer, you wouldn't be able to edit them separately. It would be one track. You would only get like the final mix into your computer, but that would work for Zoom. So a USB mixer is better if you do live performances, um, but an interface is better if you are recording large groups and want to edit the audio afterwards. Does that make sense? Great. Um, I guess I should take a moment to also mention the difference between, between condensers and dynamic microphones. I've said that word condenser a lot. I feel like I've 
maybe not everyone knows what that means. Um, condensers are typically like the big boxy microphones, whereas dynamic ones are, you think of your classic microphone that you hold in your hand for karaoke. Um, dynamic microphones work better for picking up close, like one person. Condensers work better for picking up a whole room. That's like the super reductive way. There's a whole bunch of tech that goes into it. But for most of our purposes, a condenser is what you want because a condenser, I can even step back this far and you can still hear me. It's a, you're hearing the room now too. This is not an acoustically treated room, but you can still hear me. A dynamic microphone, you would not be able to hear me right now. So that's probably what you want is a condenser. Um, and raise your hand if you were the ballet teacher. Is the person who teaches dance in here? If not, then I might skip over. I'll gloss over this part. Um, I'll give the really quick version of this. When teaching dance or teaching anything that involves live music, so if you are, if, even if you are sing, okay, yeah, so if you are performing with music that you want the audience to hear, you want to use one of these two kinds of setups right here. You need to have the music coming out of a separate device from your computer. And it needs to go from a splitter, which is like, you know, a headphone splitter, like you share your headphones or have kids share headphones. Um, cool. So if, sorry, I just read something in the chat. That's the cool. <laughs> um, you need to have it going out of the phone to both a speaker and to your interface or mixer. It needs to go out to a speaker and to the mixer. And then you need to have your microphone going into the mixer as well. I recommend dancers use a headset for obvious reasons. <laughs> a wireless headset would be the best thing for them. Um, here's an example from a dance lesson that I did at Holt with the um, Spanish teacher. This is a recording of exactly what Zoom received. So the audio came through super clear, and most importantly, it came in in time. People generally try and share music from their computer screen and then dance on top of it or sing on top of that. It's not going to work well because Zoom is putting out two separate signals and they won't be synchronized. So when you do it this way, that audio is coming in as your microphone. So it's going to be exactly in time with your video. I believe I have a second here where she talks about, and she's and dance together. Sorry. Your dad around. We are going. You are going to dance with them and dance together. So, she's wearing a headset like I talked about because we're dancing, and because we have that headset and the music both plugged into a mixer, both of those are synchronized and going out with the video in time. Um, and I have a recommended headset to buy. It's under a hundred dollars. It's a little bit of the cheapo, but <laughs> I like the cheapo. <laughs> it gets the job done. Don't spend more than you have to. <laughs> um, similarly, if you can't, well, if you don't want to run it through this way and don't want to use a splitter, you can run it to a speaker separately and then just use a condenser microphone. So similar, like I can play on my piano. You can hear that because I'm using a condenser and I have my audio settings set right, which is the last part of this. Whew. You'll be getting this presentation with this information, but these are my like three levels of what I would recommend for an audio setup. The first step, I would say just get a USB condenser. If that's what, like if you just want to spend under a hundred bucks and improve your quality, just a condenser. And I have that video earlier, which we'll talk about. It compares 10 that are under a hundred dollars. You're set. Um, that's what I teach with every day, just a condenser. Next would be a step up, which involves a mixer or interface, a condenser mic for the room, and then a headset or second condenser. The headset, um, I will click on this link in here. I recommend the, one second. <laughs> I have it over on my shelf. Um, my ceramic skull wears my headset when I'm not using it. 
So it is a pile pro and oh, will it resolve on the P D W M one nine zero four. I have a link to it in here as well. So when you get this, you can click on the um, link and it'll take you to a Google page that has like current prices. Um, demand has gone up. <laughs> so prices have gone up a little bit. Ah, so what's happening? Okay, so Sheila has asked about using a condenser mic and she couldn't hear the people. Um, you don't need to connect a headset to it what you should do is go into your audio settings and I can talk you through this at the end specifically. Um, those Yeti mics run kind of like an audio interface. They take audio in and out and your computer thought, oh, you just plugged in a new speaker. You want to use this speaker, right? You can tell your computer, no, I just want to use the microphone. Please put the audio back through my normal speakers. So you can fix that in Zoom. Um, If you're working by yourself on Zoom, is there any reason to have a mixer? Not really. Um, the only reason I would say that you would want to use a mixer if you're working by yourself is if you are doing a lot of instrument playing and you want direct quality from those instruments. So for example, Marcos uh, Napa, Afro-Peruvian percussionist, when he was doing some work on Zoom with me, we used a mixer for him and he had a microphone just for him and a microphone for his cajon. Um, and that gave him a little bit of a boost to his production. But when he's by himself, he just uses a condenser. And it works. Um, so I would recommend, I mean, I personally, I have, an, I have a Yeti and the MXL. I helped my friend move across the country and he gave me his, he gave me a Yeti for free, which was nice. <laughs> um, but this video right here is a person who goes through um, all, he goes through 10 I've AKGs in there, MXLs in there, Yetis in there. These are all under 100 and they all work. They all sound great. Um, and remember, Zoom will still compress it a little bit. So don't go by and like, you know, cream of the crop only to have Zoom <laughs> ruin it for you. <laughs> but yes, AKG is a good brand. MXL is a good brand. Um, Yeti's a good brand. Sure is a good brand always. Um, so that was setup two. And then setup three moves into big time. A mixer, as many channels as you need, and then two condenser mics for the room, left and right for the room. You don't want to send out stereo audio, but a left and right for the room will give you the entire room covered. And then a headset for you and dynamic microphones as you need. This is like if you are running a live concert and you have like 10 musicians socially distant on stage, um, you want to be able to like mix all of their audio and send it all out. I don't think anyone would necessarily need this. Most people will be fine with two and everyone else will be good with just level one. Um, but if you're looking to like move into move like up market, I know that Mr. Middlesworth and, oh, I need to just have you tell me how to say your last name. I'm so sorry. Uh, Miss Unches, I know that you guys are looking into moving up market and moving into higher production. So you might want to look at three and moving forward. So, Software for recording videos, all of these programs, <laughs> um, lots of practice with, like I said, teaching 50 plus kids at once <laughs> who all want to type and say good morning and tell me what they had for lunch and tell me their teeth fell out. <laughs> so software for recording would be OBS. It's the one I use the most. It has the highest like learning curve, but it's also got the most customizability. With OBS, I can move my picture wherever I want it. I can put a green screen behind me and make it so it's just my torso in there. Um, I can have multiple video sources at once going in. I can put pictures on screen as I need them, take them away. OBS is totally customizable, but that also means it has like the highest amount of work to put in. It's what streamers who like work on Twitch and YouTube and play video games online, it's what they use. It's called Open Broadcare open broadcast software. Screencastify is much better for out of the box. If you just want something that you're going to turn on, like click on the app and it's going to have your video in the corner and the screen behind you, Screencastify or Loom. Um, I believe, Miss Cash, that Loom is still 
giving their full account for educators, for public school teachers. I believe that that is still the case. If you have a, like a um, public school system email, I think you can still get it for free. Um, Screencastify and Loom both work well. If you are going to be doing any editing, and even if like this is just baseline editing, like you want to cut out that part in the middle where you had to go walk over and grab your headphone or grab your um, microphone, you want to cut that out and you know move past that. iMovie, if you have a if you have a Mac device, it just works. I am a I'm an Android person, I'm a PC person, but God help me, iMovie just works. <laughs> Sony Vegas is the equivalent for PC. It does cost a little money. Um, I got mine for 30 bucks because I bought an old version. And that has allowed me to do like virtual band projects um, where I've like mixed in like multiple, I think I was like 14 kids at once playing instruments mixed together on screen, multi-track video editing. Sony Vegas does that well. iMovie does not do picture in picture. So if you're trying to show like four people at once who sang and you want to put them all on screen, iMovie's not the one for you. You'll need to move into like Adobe Premiere. Um, yeah, there are other ones for PC, but Sony Vegas is like the least bad one that I found. I tried a whole bunch of free ones and none of them seemed to do the job nicely. Um, YouTube Studio also allows for cutting, trimming, and blurring so say you were working with um a student and you wanted to include a video with them but you want to protect their privacy youtube studio does have a facial blur feature where you can upload it to youtube as private only you can see it edit there edit it do like the cutting and trimming and blur the kid's face and then download it separately yes the captioning for youtube um youtube does have captioning it will not put those on your video when you re-download it. So I'm talking about using YouTube as like your editing software, just putting it in YouTube, editing it and taking it away. Um, the captions won't stay. You can download them and like use them in any other software, which probably can put captions on, um, but you can, yeah. YouTube will do automatic captions. Um, and that's usually for my videos. I let it do the automatic captions and then I go back and correct them. And then I just use that and translate it line by line into Spanish for I can second have bilingual videos. Um, but the legwork of transcribing it is already done for me. Logic Pro, um, Miss Cash, we can have a Zoom meeting during my office hours and talk about that specifically because <laughs> we're both on DPS time. <laughs> Um, yeah, these programs are all great because they are popular and there are tutorial videos out there for them. So anything you want to do in OBS, somebody else has probably already done it. So you can go find a video with someone telling you how to do that. That because they are free means tons of people use them. And because tons of people use them, it means there are people who will show you how to use them. <laughs> um, I didn't mention Audacity is free for audio editing. I feel like most performing art people are used to audacity, but um, I did not mean the, <laughs> the expression or feeling. I meant the program. <laughs> audacity is a like super bare bones audio editor. Um, it's what I use when I'm recording because even like FL Studio and Logic, they're just lots of clunky, lots of things you have to click and edit. Audacity, you just run straight in and you can like fix it later. Okay, so yeah, OBS can be a little, um, I see Miss, Miss A, I don't see you in the video. So Miss Alderman? Oh, no, oh, now I see you, sorry. Like, looking, I'm trying to match the um, text with the name. Um, OBS can be tricky. Um, okay, well, we'll, I'll loop back to this at the end. <laughs> There's like a line of questions now at the end. That's good. Um, moving on through editing. I hate editing. I do it, but I hate it. <laughs> it is a nightmare. Um, like I said, unless you have a like the brand new MacBook Pro, um, or you have a like gaming PC with like 24 gigabytes of RAM, um, eight core processor, dedicated graphics card, you will not 
have much happiness and success with intense editing. Um, and if you, I guess, if you don't know what I was saying when I said those words, if you don't know if you have those, you probably don't have those. Um, it can take hours to get your footage and clips lined up right. And it's really hard for us to let mistakes go if we have to watch it over and over while editing. You will find yourself looking at a video and by the time you finish editing it, you're not happy with how you played this one chunk or how you explained this one line and you want to go back and fix that one thing. But that means you have to go back and re-edit everything. <laughs> That's why I always say just do it live. Um, you'll be happier with it. The people watching it will be happier. It is much harder to let, it's hard for us to let something go. It's hard for people to let something go once it's edited. Because once you start doing editing, you raise their expectations. Once they see that it's edited, um, editing in a program like iMovie, iMovie, like I said, is the exception. It just works. Um, iMovie is coded well for Apple. Um, it's designed to run on their computer. So if you have iMovie and you want to cut up your videos that way, that works. It'll run it well. Um, even older Macs will, even older Mac computers will run that okay. Uh, but still, once you once you get into the editing process, if you're doing any more than like an introduction and then cut to the clip of you playing the instrument, if you're doing any more editing than that people subconsciously expect it to be like TV level editing or movie level editing. It raises their subconscious expectations, which means that now you aren't meeting their criterion for success, which alters the interaction between them and you. Um, if they're watching something live, people have much more forgiveness. They don't expect the same things from a live performance. Um, people don't, people don't expect the same from a stand-up comedian who's rehearsed versus whose line. <laughs> um, if they break in whose line, that's fine. That's it's improv. Uh, does that make sense? Where it's like you're playing to the um, audience. So, like I said, a little bit of editing, like cut cut from your introduction to the playing of the instrument, that's good. But anything deeper, you're gonna start to um, start to like hurt yourself. There's like an uncanny valley you fall into. Presentation. This I think most of us are used to by now, but it's always good to go back and say, speaking voice makes your microphone happy. So many people still, I wind up on a Zoom call and the first time someone unmutes, hi, yes, I'm here. Like they start just shouting like they have to yell all the way to us. Um, and that can get really difficult. Um, just like Shana said before, Shana was helping me out with making sure I had everything set up. My microphone is turned down a little bit. If I turn my microphone all the way up, oh, this one's going to not do it. Ah, hang on. I can do this. I'm trying to generate a failure so you can hear it. Let's see. How about this? I don't know. You get clipping. In, in short, you'll work with clipping errors if you are too loud. Um, and it's better to have your audio a little soft than clip once because once you start clipping no amount of audio editing can fix that you can always turn up the volume but once you've clipped your microphone you can't fix it um, and body movement centering the shot teachers animated performers were animated but you kind of have to lock yourself down to center frame um, keep your motion in your arms I have the bad habit when I'm teaching of like sliding off in this direction and it just gets uncomfortable to look at someone who's like one third out of the shot. Um, in zoom settings. Yes, I am. Uh, yeah. I adjust the microphone level in zoom. Zoom does a good job of like picking a good microphone level for you. But sometimes we've had the issue with students where their Chromebooks will be update. Yeah. You know, their Chromebooks update and suddenly their microphone is at full volume and it's clipping no matter how quiet they are. I had to make a video tutorial for my students on how to turn their microphone setting back down. Um, you would not imagine, you wouldn't believe trying to teach reading when you can't understand what the child's saying. <laughs> so yeah, um, keep yourself in frame. That's the short version of that. It's just don't go too far out of field.
presentation, Google Slides, make them pretty, but keep your text big. If you're doing this with children, a lot of them will be looking at it on a screen this big because big, big brother, big sister has the computer for their class or mom has the computer for work and they get to watch their things on this tiny screen or a little tablet. Um, and showing videos. This was the one that was asked about quite a bit. It is better to have the video saved to your computer and share it that way than to try to share it from YouTube. Think about it like you have the internet pipeline for your computer. If your computer is trying to download that video and like stream it to your computer and you're trying to stream it out, you are using up half of your available space just to get that video to your computer. So if you have the video on your computer, now you have double the space available to share it out. It will have a better frame rate. It will have better audio and the audio will be lined up more. For example, um, I, down, I have one that I downloaded. I haven't fully edited it yet. I'm going to change what I'm sharing for a second. This is a video that, yeah, of Marcos. Um, this is the recording from Zoom. YouTube videos officially no. Um, there are websites that will allow you to download YouTube videos. <laughs> that is the, that's the well put it. There are websites that will allow you to. Um, if it's your video that you put up, you can download it. Um, I do that with some of mine, my teaching videos that I used at school. I just kept them on my computer and shared them that way. This is a video. Yes, it's not exactly legal to do so. Um, so buyer beware. This is uh, an example of um, a video shared from my computer directly. They play, they, they dance with the violin. Con el violin, huh? but then chain and the star use the guitar. And on. now I use the cajon. So we have alternative, right? <laughs> so the thing is dance. If you can dance, good, 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 good. You need to dance, okay? So let's do zapateo afro peruano. His son has a um, microphone on the cajon. Yeah, that's um pre it's pre-recorded saved on my computer yes thank you shana sorry um this is yeah this was a zoom video but i'm talking about sharing it out right now the audio and video line up better if you just have it saved on your computer and share it that way um that was also an example of running a usb mixer and i'll say i'm a little proud of that one because miking tap dancing is notoriously difficult especially if there's music happening while someone's tap dancing, it is very hard to get the sound of their shoes coming through. Um, but even over Zoom live, we were able to get that to work and balance out with his speech, the instrument, and his feet through using that USB mixer. Um, of course, if it were just one person, we could have just used the um, USB mic, or we could have just used the interface. I happen to own the mixer. I don't own an interface. Own an interface. How do I share back to my, there we go. How do I get back to the presentation? How do you get the video to be full screen for the audience? How do you turn off the audience's video so that the video is all that's sharing on the screen? Okay, let me think about that for a second to properly understand what you're saying. Um, when you share a video, it will default to being most of their screen. They can go back. If they click on the top right where it says view, they can change that. Um, so, but that's on them. You can default to it being just um, the video. And what program did I pre record that in? Um, that was actually recorded just from Zoom. So that's what was going out over the Zoom meeting. The audio as well. That's 
we downloaded that from Zoom after the presentation. Yeah, the audio came through very well. I was very happy. I could not hear it while it was happening because I was in the same room as him, so I couldn't monitor. That was mixing blind. <laughs> um, and then three weeks later, my assistant principal actually gave me the link to download it. And I'm like, oh, it did work. But only um, stop share for one second. If you are sharing a video, yes, the optimizing settings, that is what, that's the last part of the meeting is the Zoom specific settings. Um, if you are presenting, I don't, you can't do this with a video because when you, when you share a video or share your screen, it defaults to being everyone's point of view. But if you right click, or sorry, if you click at the top of your picture where the three dots are, where you have like mute or in the three dots or unmute and three dots, as the host, when you click on those three dots, you have the option to spotlight for everyone. Suddenly you are the center of everyone's attention. Um, they can still go back at the view and change it to gallery view, um, but you will default to being the main thing they see, which is why we, I mean, as a teacher, we have students who, um, we have parents who wonder why can we see other students? Why are we seeing in their houses? We want to just see the teacher. Uh, well, we tell them we, we spotlight ourselves, but if your student has, if your child has gone and clicked the gallery view, we can't make it so they can't see that. So you can't make it so they can't take away the um, screen share. But ideally, it will go full screen for them automatically. Just like that one did, like that popped into main view for you, right? Um, so yeah, you can't control what they see, but you can push them in the right direction. <laughs> All right, and um, oh, I don't know if we have time for this because this is run long, but if you're collecting samples from the students or from the participants, you can use services like Flipgrid if you're a teacher and have them logged in or Vocaroo to um, audio record and have them send it to you as a link. For example, if I go in here, it's just one big red button. I click on it and let's say I'm talking. Let's say I'm presenting to the students and I want them to echo after me and sing. I have them echo that back with me. Then they click on stop when they're done. And let's say I'm talking. Let's say I'm presenting to the students and I want them to echo after me and sing. That came through. Um, when they click on save and share, they can send it as a link. So you can have them with no software no files, copy this link. You can have them just put it in the chat and you now have access to that recording. Um, for people who are doing choir work and doing like trying to do virtual choir or like some semblance of virtual choir, if you can like make it happen, this is a game changer for you because now you don't have to have them send you files. You can just have them send you that URL and you can go back and edit it. It is just audio, but that's the best place to start is just with the audio. Um, you can go back when you click on that link and you can download it. I have it really zoomed in for showing, there we go. You can go back and download that audio clip and then you can edit it in Audacity or in Logic or in GarageBand, whichever software you have. Um, I've done that with some students. One thing I've done with teaching choir to my kids is I will actually put the metronome that I want them to be on. I'll put it in my ears. I'll leave that on and I will have them like echo lines like and then they sing it back and then I go through short bursts like and then I get all of their samples back and I can mix them together and they don't have to ever sing the whole song all the way through correctly. Um, my own fault picking a Spanish song <laughs> as a challenge for him. Um, but now I have all those chunks and I just cut out the parts where I was singing and it works. They don't even have to have headphones for that strategy to work because you're just having them do it as an echo. Um, no issue of latency on that one. 
because yes, the larger recording does take longer to receive. You do occasionally have it just glitch out and dump a kid's recording. Like it'll go into the, um, you'll get that saving box down there. You'll get that little saving circle and it just won't go away. Um, every online program has that issue. Sometimes canvas does that a lot to me. Um, but there's no issue of latency for them. The ideal way to do this is to have them all muted on their end. So you stay rock steady. And let's see, I can give an example of a large recording. I thought you'd never ask. Um, <laughs> this is a midway through. I haven't fixed it all yet, but Recording with Vocaroo, so recording students singing, you can't record them together in Zoom at all because it will not be in time. There will be latency. Having them all muted and you just sing rock steady and like you go on faith that they're echoing back um, when they, yeah, there won't be latency because you are staying steady no matter what. If they were unmuted, oh, the raw audio quality. Um, yeah, Vocaroo will do better um, for their end. If you're recording the screen, you'll be getting their audio as it's filtered through Zoom. Um, you get, yeah, Zoom records your original audio by default and by default records what they've sent you. So you're getting the compressed version of what they've sent. Uh, let's see, Saba Burrito, Burrito de Belen. Please be the right version. I've been um, bad and not named my files correctly. <laughs> Shame on me. All right, there we go. So this is an example in FL Studio. Um, I don't have all the audio correct yet, um, but this is all these little brown and purple sec. All these brown sections here are examples of kids singing. So. Um, so that made me very happy when it worked. I got the kids doing harmonies because I just sang the line, then sang it a third up, and then sang it a third up, and they echoed me each time. And you also get the effect if you do it, like sing it multiple times at them, you get multiple versions of what they've sang. And it's like a pop artist doing vocal stacks. So if you only had four kids in your choir and you had them echo each line four times, suddenly you have 16 voices to work with. Um, it's also helpful because if they mess up the words on two of those takes, you still have two left. <laughs> uh, you would not believe the things I've heard. They, for Burrito Sabanero, they go, it's like, well, can't use that. Um, that was the last part of equipment and all of that type of stuff. Now the real headache, Zoom. Everyone sings simultaneously on Boku using Zoom to see each other. Yes, that's actually, that's what I meant. I'm sorry I didn't make that clear. So everyone would be together singing um, either after you or with a track if you play a track through your computer like if you share your screen and like have them sing at the same time you can have them all sing and record on vocaroo and send that to you um, if they're doing it with a track synchronously you want them to wear headphones though so they don't hear you don't get the track mixed in with their recording if you're doing it where they just call and respond you don't need the um, they don't need headphones because then it's the track's not playing in the background I, I'm I'm excited for for you. I'm excited for me too because I only worked this out like two weeks ago. Um, <laughs> I've been doing it with Amy Davis from Forest View. We've been running a virtual choir, and we've had them doing the same thing just with Canvas's recording system, um, which I kind of hate now because it keeps dropping videos. I'm sure you did a wonderful job. Do it again because <laughs> I don't have your video. So I'm still sharing screen. Good. Engagement tools. Someone asked about how to engage students in a large community, keep people engaged. Um, I didn't use these with you guys because you're adults and adults have more of a tolerance for sitting through listening. Um, <laughs> kids need to be entertained more.
So polls are great for having everyone answer a question at once. It's great for checking understanding. Um, for sake, for example, um, oh, Beverly Botsford, Miss Botsford, you teach um, like Latin drumming too, right? Like drumming from part, different parts of the world. Yes. <laughs> so say you were giving them information about it as well. Like you're talking about the um, histor historical context of the drums, where the drums are from. You could have them like say when you launch a poll, polls are, if you're the host, polls are at the bottom of your screen. You could have a poll where you ask them, okay, where is the shake array from? And you launch that poll. And let's say you have your four options named after four different places in the world. They all pick. Um, an answer. So they would pick and you could see about how many kids got it. Does it really change? Like, you can remind them where it's from. Um, for teachers, it's good for assessment. So Miss Cash, if you were doing this in your class, you could have a preset question. And Zoom will tell you after the meeting, you can go in. Um, and this is all tutorial is in this video right here where it has polls. Zoom has a, a good tutorial on it. Um, you can go back and get the example, like get the data on who answered what. So who said A, B, C, D? Yep. Um, you can get who said A, B, C, D, who said what country. You can use that for collect, like collecting data and assessments. Um, I generally don't bother going back and getting it because with as many kids as I teach at a time, it doesn't quite work. But let's go with, um, there's an example of how I implement it in my teaching. I use the rhythm trainer. And let's go with, you know, this will be fun. Mode B, here we go. So we have this rhythm here. Let's all read it together. One, two, ready, go. Takadimi ta, takadimi ta. And I have them do it again. One more time, everyone. Ready, go. Takadimi ta, takadimi ta. Now here are the four choices. Here's A. Here's B. Here's C, and here's D. All right, everyone, fill in your answers, <laughs> and feel free to go ahead and fill them in because then I can share the I can share what it looks like to them. Um, once you've filled in, I'll stop a little early. Yeah, four is good. Five is good enough. Share results. Yay! We all got it right. It was B. That's one way I use it in my class. You could use it for content. You do have to make the poll before the session. That will make it the most effective. Um, you, yeah, like I said, there's a whole tutorial in here on how to do it through Zoom's website. It is through the website, not through the one that you download on your computer. You have to log in through Chrome. It took me a while to figure that out. Um, so that's a good way to get engagement, keeps them awake. Grade level limitations, I have had success with everyone down to first grade with simple questions. Kindergarten struggled greatly, um, but even first graders, because it pops up on their screen. And even you could keep it like a two question poll. It could be two only, sorry, it could be only two options. It could be, I think up to like 10 options. So if you had it like a, yeah, a yes or no question, great way to get yes or no from the whole group. Um, I use a pulse check um, when I open my meetings as a way to make it more personable. I tell them, go ahead and tell me, how are you feeling today? And it has like, great, good, okay, bad, oof. Um, and that gets them, it breaks away that like personal wall, lets us be a little bit more personal with each other. Visual answers are great too. Like I said, thumbs up or thumbs down for you guys. That's a really quick way to get everyone to answer you in the moment. Um, keeps your pacing up. <laughs> the big question, the last thing in here is original sound. This link will once again take you through how Zoom says to do it. Um, they filter your audio by default. So if I go into my audio settings, like I said, I'm going to have a hard time like making an error happen. But Zoom likes to take away background noise. And it thinks of music as background noise. So if I have that turned on and I play my piano, it's probably pulling it all back, right? You can't hear it very well. I'm assuming. Again, I can't tell. Um, but if I turn on original sound, 
Now Zoom is not filtering my audio. It's not taking away any echo. It is letting all the audio come through. It's not deciding what the kids get to hear. So that's gonna be in settings. And then you have to go to audio. You can set your default background noise suppression to low, which will help in general. And then you go to advanced and you wanna, these are my suggested settings. Um, let it do the auto, auto processing, auto echo cancellation. I leave some of that on because otherwise you get tons of feedback when people do talk to you. Um, and really what it does when you have auto turned on is it means if you're talking, it just mutes zoom through your speakers. So if I'm talking, it won't let someone else be heard for me. I have to be quiet to be, let people talk to me. And I usually turn, yeah, I don't disable the echo. High fidelity music mode is what you want to do because that really gives like that gives them just the good audio quality. And then I don't use stereo audio. It's not going to make a difference for your students and it really slows things down. Whew, that was the last thing I had. Um, there were a few questions that people had individually. Uh, before I go back and loop back to those, are there any questions about that part of it? looking in the chat I don't see any new questions so that looks good um, one thing I will say in Vocaroo is you might want to tell your people when they're doing it to go to that little gear for settings they have an auto adjust volume and remove background noise you may want to have your people tinker with this to get the best result for your setting um, with little kids, I would do neither of them. With older people, I might try background noise taken away. I might try the auto adjustment. It all comes down to like how the first recordings you get back sound. When I first played it, I'm sure you could hear it like jumped the volume level up and down a little bit. Um, any other questions? All right. Um, <laughs> Or is this just like the stunned with too much information at once? <laughs> um, all the things that I have talked about, the acapella app, I have done a little bit with it. By the time I got into the acapella, or by the, by the time it became popular, I was already using Sony Vegas to, um, to edit together multi-track videos. Like I have one video where it's like five part choir and it, just me and a green screen. Um, so by the time I, by the time acapella came around, I was already doing that. So it seemed like I didn't want to move down market with the software. Um, I have one student who uses headphones and mic and can stream her pre-recorded accompaniment directly in. That is wonderful. If you can have a student stream it in, that's great. Might be better for your sake, just as the teacher running it to have her send it to you so you can play it from your computer. That just will help. Yeah, if she has pre-recorded accompaniment, um, are you talking about streaming it into class? Like streaming it into the meeting? Oh, never mind. sorry. Streaming it to you. Okay, oh, you're talking about for lessons, gotcha. Yeah. Um, okay, yeah. For live lessons one-on-one -on -one over Zoom. But her husband works for Google and he just sort of sort of just set it up in a, like with all these crazy, I don't even know. And I would love to know what could be done so that, you know, a student could do that. That doesn't have a husband who's like a super techie guy. <laughs> Wonderful. So for that, I would recommend going back to where I had the thing about set up for dance, because that seems like it might work well for your student. Okay. Um, this one on the right where it has just the phone and the speaker a condenser mic um, they don't have to have a condenser but if they just have their phone speaker and the student either going into the computer or into a microphone or into a microphone interface having the audio on their phone mm -hmm. and playing that track um, yes I will I'll send you some recommendations for um, webcams, Joan. Um, 
yeah having that set up if you have them turn on original sound then it won't take away their thing so if i play something through my phone um now i gotta like pick something on the fly without that won't get a copyright strike <laughs> You can hear them and the audio if they play it through their phone that way, as long as original sound is turned on. Okay. So you may want to send that link when you get the slides. Um, at the end, I have the link for how to set up original sound. You may want to share this link with them, and then people can just play it through their phones. Uh, let's see, tripod brands. I don't have any brands I use. I recommend just getting the cheapest monopod you can find. Monopod is like the one that's essentially a selfie stick with three feet that fold out at the bottom. I buy them, I use them for a few months until they break, and then I buy another one. <laughs> um, yeah, the tripods, as long as of a, it's a lot less abstract. You can't tell what's going on inside of a microphone. You can see what's going on in a tripod just by looking at it. Um, four part, four people on Zoom. Vocaroo to capture the audio for later editing. Yes. Um, so with what it sounds like you want, actually, here's the cheat way I would say to go about that. Have them record their audio separately, send it to you, and mix it. And then you can just go into Zoom and play like stream that audio to them and have them all sing and record the screen just lip sync it that would be my <laughs> that would be my like my cheat way when i work with little kids <laughs> happy to have been helpful to everyone who's stepping out yes um i know that was a whole lot i'm sorry <laughs> rabbit trails turn into like full warrens All right. Um, yes, I can. Uh, we can meet up some Miss Pottsford. We can meet up some to um, work with that. I also would like to talk to you about working on um, some stuff. Shana, put your name out to me, especially for um, some units I'm writing with uh, multicultural music. Like I wrote, I've written a unit with Marcos, um, and I'd love to work with you and um, Jali Chisoko um, to write some more units for teachers to teach to go with what you bring have them have a full unit they can teach that goes with that in the classroom. <laughs> I've been finishing up the um, January. We'll talk on that part, but I can meet with you to talk about the other stuff. Recommendations for camera, webcam for YouTube recordings. Okay. Contact info. Um. Oh, I should put that in the slides, shouldn't I? I will... I'll put that right here. I'll just delete, yeah, I'll just put um, my email address. And Shane is going to send this out, but I'll go ahead and put it in the chat. Um, copy. Paste. Thank you so much, Enoch. If there are was... no more questions, yeah, that sounds like a good stopping point. <laughs> Yes, and um, we'll be sending out all the information. The video will be available. Um, we're also going to send out a feedback form. Please give us some feedback and also let us know if there are other workshops that would be useful to you during this time, and we will work to set that up. Thank you so much. It was good seeing so many of your faces.